Hey guys, welcome to section 3.4 on the point slope form. Let's get started. So just as a reminder, we had three forms of the equation of a straight line. We already went over the first one, the slope intercept form in the last section, that was y equals mx plus b. This section, fairly short, should be about the point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we have a third, the standard form, we'll talk about this in the next section. So breaking this equation down, y is the variable. Similarly, x is our variable in this equation. y1 represents the y-coordinate of the point of a point that the line passes through, and it's a constant. It has to be a number. y1 cannot be a variable. y is our variable on this side. m is the typical slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This also needs to be an, uh, a number or a constant in the final answer. x needs to be a variable. x1 is the x-coordinate of the point that the line passes through. It's also a constant, so it needs to be a number. So a couple of examples of equations that are in slope inter uh, I'm sorry, are in point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now in this case, you'll notice that here I have a plus sign, but that just me means or meant that x1 was negative. Because if you have x minus a negative 4, the negative and the negative would make it a positive. Similarly here we have y plus 4, or y minus y1. It just means that here the y1 was a negative 4, because a negative and a negative would make a positive. Equals m times x minus x1. Same pattern here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So in this case, x1 would have been negative 6. Here, notice that y is by itself, and then you have equals m times x minus x1. This is still in point-slope form, because from anything, we can always subtract a 0 and keep it the same. So in this equation, if we had written y minus a 0 on this side, we never really write a minus zero. So that's why sometimes students see this equation or see it the way it's written here, and they think it's not point-slope form because it doesn't have a number here. It is in point-slope form, and it doesn't need to have a number there. That number would just be zero. And by the same token, this is not in point-slope form. You'll notice here the coefficient of y in all these examples is one. Here, it's not. So immediately, it's not in point slope. I don't even have to look at the other side of the equation. Here, again, the coefficient of y is not 1. 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 But for other reasons as well, you can see that none of these equations look like this. This one comes the closest. But remember, the equation has to be y minus y1. So as long as this 7 is here, this equation is not in point-slope form. Point-slope form requires a y to be by itself. It cannot have a number here or a coefficient here in front of it. So let's start with an example. Now that we know what the point-slope form is, let's say the question asks us to find the equation of a line, or of the line, in point-slope form that passes through these two points. Hopefully these points look familiar. We used them in the last section to find the equation, but we found it in slope-intercept form. So now we're going to do the same exact thing, but we want our answer in point-slope form. So we already had found in the previous section that the slope of the line between these two points is 7 thirds. So I'm going to reuse that. You're welcome to re-verify it. Just plug this into the slope formula. So now comes the question, well, which point should we choose? Do we use the first one or the second one? And when we do this, when we did this for the previous section, I did the problem with both points, and we said that, hey, the answer turns out to be the same. Does that still hold when we change to point-slope form? So let's verify. So if we use the first point, 2 comma 3, we write down the equation again, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus, the y-coordinate is 3, so I write a 3 here. 
equals m, which is 7 thirds, so that goes here, times the quantity x minus x1. The x coordinate is 2, so I put a 2 here. And that's it. This is my answer, or this is the equation of the line in point slope form. Now if we were to use the second point, we would get we would start with the same base. And but instead, because the coordinates are different, our equation looks different. Y minus 10 equals 7 thirds times the quantity x minus 5. Because I have to use the coordinates 5, comma 10. So now I ask the same question: are these two things the same? More importantly, are these two equations going to give us the same equation that we got with the slope intercept form in the previous section? So if we start with a different form, say a point slope form, can we still get the equation in slope intercept form starting here? So, or in other words, do both these equations represent the same line? So if we were to start with the first one, we can distribute the 7 over 3 into here. So 7 over 3 times x gives me 7 over 3x. 7 over 3 times negative 2, I multiply the 2 with a 7. That gives me a 14 on top, and the 3 just comes down. The negative stays. At this stage, I don't like fractions, so I can clear all the fractions by multiplying every single term of the equation by 3. So that's my reasoning here. So 3 times y minus 3 times 3 equals 3 times 7 over 3x, which is exactly what I had here. I just copied it down. Minus, that comes down, 3 times 14 over 3. So here we see that this 3 cancels with this 3, this 3 cancels with this 3, and we're left with 3y minus 3 times 3 is 9. 7x is the only thing that remains here, and then we have a minus 14 left over. So remember, in order to get the line in slope-intercept form, we have to solve for y. So to get y by itself, I can first get rid of this 9. The 9 is being subtracted from the 3y, so the inverse operation of subtraction would be addition. So when I pick this 9 up and I move it over to the other side, it becomes an addition by 9. And at this stage, we're left with 3y equals 7x, negative 14 plus 9, is simply negative 5. And then in order to isolate the, the y by itself, the operation between 3 and y is that of multiplication. The inverse operation would require me to divide every single term by 3, or divide the 3 over to the other side. Both techniques are fine, or both approaches are okay. So 7x divided by 3 would simply give me 7 thirds x, minus 5 divided by 3 would give me 5 thirds. Hopefully you remember, and if not, you can flip through your notes, go back to the previous section 3.3, and verify that this is indeed the equation of the line that we got using slope-intercept form. So when we solve the equation using point-slope form, we got equations that looked different, but ultimately after we manipulate them, after we kind of solve for y, we end up getting the same exact equation as the slope-intercept form. So again, hopefully this drives home the point that the three forms are just three different versions of the same equation. It just looks different. So you have, you're still cooking the same piece of steak. Instead of having it medium-rare or medium, you have it well done. Now let's see if the same thing happens with the second equation as well, and in fact we see cheating and looking ahead, it does. The steps are identical. So first, I distributed the 7 thirds. Then I multiplied every single term by 3. Then I added the negative 30 over to the other side because it's being subtracted here. And then finally, I divided every single term by 3. So please verify this for yourself. I'm leaving this as a, an exercise for the reader, or for the viewer, I guess because I, I did the exact same thing in the previous couple of slides. So convince yourself that this does indeed work out to be the same exact thing. And again here, this goes to show that even though we use two different points, so this was 5 comma 10, and the previous line, uh, or the previous equation came from 2 comma 3, even if we use two different points, we end up getting the same equation. Not only do we end up getting the same equation, 
both of them, when simplified, give us the slope intercept form. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say the question says to find the equation of the line in point slope form with this slope that passes through this point. This is a, an exceptionally simple question. All we have to do is just write down the equation we're starting with, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Replace y1 with the y coordinate, which is 7. So the 7 gets replaced here. m gets replaced with the slope, 3 halves. And then you have x minus. Now notice x1 is already negative, so I have to put that term in parentheses. The negative times a negative would make it a positive. So this is our answer in point slope form. Now this requires a little bit more work if we were to give our answer in standard, or sorry, I take that back, in slope intercept form. But hopefully you can see that how much easier this process is if the question is asking for the solution in point slope form. Now, just to end, a couple of facts about vertical and horizontal lines that we've talked about, but we didn't really have a place to put them. So here they are all together. Let's talk about horizontal lines first. Hopefully you remember from your own investigation in the last video and also the stuff that we talked about in class that for horizontal lines, the y coordinate does not change. So if I wanted to find the coordinates of this point, they would be 0 comma 2. If I wanted to find the coordinates of this point, it might be say 2 comma 2. The coordinates of this point might be negative 4 comma 2. But the comma 2 portion, the y coordinate, is the one that never changes. And as a result of that, we can say that the equation of all horizontal lines is always y equals a constant, or y equals a number. And that number is the y coordinate that the line goes through. So if this horizontal line goes through y equals 2, then the equation of the line is y equals 2. Uh, last but very important point about horizontal lines is that the slope is always zero. The slope of all horizontal lines is zero. So similarly, for vertical lines, we can see that it's the x-coordinate that does not change. So if this is a line that passes through this point, 3, 0, it will also pass through 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, negative 2. The x-coordinate is the one that never changes here. As a result, the equation of these lines is always x equals a constant, or x equals a number. And the x-coordinate that the line goes through is that number. Finally, notice that the slope of this line is undefined, as is the slope of all vertical lines that you can think of. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.